doing a lot more research into this, you're probably going to see a whole nother video on just parasol pockets, to be honest. Hello all and welcome, my name is Margaret. I am a historical costumer and textile conservator in training. And today we're going to dive a little bit farther into the parasol pocket. Now, if you saw my video on the history of pockets from a couple weeks ago, whichever whichever one it appears in, I will put a card up there or a link down in the description for you to go check that one out. I mentioned in that video the trend of the parasol pocket, which shows up around beginning in about 1874 and ending around 1877, but really living in 1876. 1876 is the year of the parasol pocket. I would talked about in that video how there's a lot of debate around the parasol pocket. So today I thought we'd dive a little bit farther into that. So let's just start off with the basics. What is the parasol pocket? It's kind of important to define this term as it's defined differently in history and can mean slightly different things to different people. For the purposes of this video, a parasol pocket is a large patch pocket on the outside of one's polonaise or overskirt between the hips and the knee in the thigh region on sort of the center back portion of that skirt. They're normally conical in shape, hence the name parasol pocket, but they can also be an elongated rectangle. They're often highly decorative with bows, ruffles, ribbons, ruching, you name it, the whole nine yards. These pockets have also been referred to as cornet pockets, cornier pockets, and hotties, although the last two I've never personally seen in the literature. They sort of are referred to historically as parasol pockets, but more commonly they're just referred to as pockets. We are specifically referring to this type of pocket in the era between 1874 and 1877, most concentrated in 1876. And to situate this in the whole sort of realm of fashion, this is the end of the first bustle era, also known as the waterfall bustle era, where the bustles are very full and large at the back, but sort of cascading down the body in a very A-line and cohesive form. And just at the beginning of the natural form or sheath bustle era, where the bustle gets very close and tight to the body with an elongated train. The parasol pocket sits right smack dab in the center of that sort of transition period. So now that we've defined what a parasol pocket is in terms of this video, we have to talk about the current discourse on parasol pockets within the community at large. There aren't a ton of people talking about the parasol pocket as it is sort of an esoteric trend in the field of dress history, but there are a few. Most notably, the Pinterest board debunking the parasol pocket. This board is a gathering of visual references that have parasol pockets and sort of takes the stance that parasol pockets were not used, in fact, to hold parasols. They make this point primarily based on that none of the visual representations of the parasol pocket actually have parasols in them. This is a great board to check out if you're looking for a large smattering of parasol pocket references, both in extant garments and in primary research materials. And you will be seeing a lot of those images in this video that you're watching right now. It will be linked down below as per usual. There's also uh, several blogs talking about the parasol pocket, sort of compiling references. One of those is That Mysterious Pocket by the Broke Costumer, which was published in 2016. I will also leave a link to that article down below. It has a lot of quotes and things from different secondary and primary sources. This blog post does take the stance that although parasol pockets were useful for things like handkerchiefs, gloves, and fans, they were not necessarily used for parasols. It is worthy to note that there aren't a ton of published materials that focus on the parasol pocket, especially in more traditional publishing, as it's often reduced to one or two sentences in a book. As we talked about in the pocket video, there's not a ton on 19th century pockets, so this makes sense. So the big question for this video, was the parasol pocket used to hold a parasol? It's good to know right here, right now, that the only visual reference that we have for a parasol fitting into a parasol pocket is that of the Indianapolis Institute of Art. One of their dresses is photographed with a parasol inside the parasol pocket. This, however, cannot be used as either a plus or negative for the parasol pocket question, as this is an interpretive source and was a decision made by a curator that may or may not have been researched prior to that decision. We just don't know. It's an inconclusive piece of evidence. It's kind of misleading, but also 
definitely sparks my interest. So let's talk about the main arguments against the use of the parasol pocket for parasols. The first, as I've stated before, is that there are no visual representations of a parasol being put into a parasol pocket. Also, the historical literature does not normally use the term parasol pocket to describe these types of pockets, but normally just uses the word pocket. These pockets are also highly decorative, often lined with some beautiful silk, not really a hard wearing pocket that you would necessarily be carrying your parasol in. They're also very trendy and were obviously something that was used for decoration. I've also seen in several sources that 1870s parasols were robust with longer handles, although I'm not really an expert on parasols and I didn't really look into this all that much, so take that as you will. However, I wanted to look into this more because I do think there are some compelling aspects to the parasol pocket that make it so it could have been used for parasols. Personally, these are my arguments for why I think there might have been some evidence for using this for actual parasols. First, it's shaped like a parasol. Like, just, I, I feel like it just makes sense that that's what you would put in there. It's at sort of the height where it's inconvenient to reach your hand down into it. You'd have to like scrunch your body to get into there with, you know, with a corset on, that would be a, a little bit harder to do. Um, but it's like back and down a little bit. So it's the perfect height to stick a parasol in it where the handle would come up to your hand height. Additionally, in my research, I found that these pockets are normally on walking costumes, street costumes, and promenade costumes. That's what they're labeled as. And are also found on dressing gowns, however, those pockets are slightly different. But all of these types of gowns are, are gowns that you would wear out into the world, gowns that you would have a parasol with. They also pop up on evening gowns every once in a while, but I think that that sort of digs more into the trend aspect than the functional aspect of the parasol pocket. And although parasols are never shown in the pocket, they're often shown with the pocket. So it's obvious that these pockets were being used in situations where parasols were also being used. And these pockets are quite large and they could conceivably hold a parasol. But first I wanna note a little bit about researching in the late 1870s. This is a time when the magazines of yesteryear like Godey's Ladies and Peterson's are issuing their last volumes and magazines like The Delineator are issuing their first volumes. So there's this weird crossover in the magazine culture at the time, but it's also harder to find the last issues and the first issues of a run because they weren't as popular, obviously. So this is a more difficult era of fashion to sort of do primary source research in. So I've compiled a couple of things that I think are compelling, but just note that if you're gonna look into this yourself, it is a little bit harder than you may think. So what is the evidence that I found to either confirm or deny the use of the parasol pocket with an actual parasol? Now, the first piece of evidence I found was an advertisement in the Harper's Monthly Magazine for a dress in the Harper's Bazaar, a pattern that they were selling, that had a parasol pocket included. Upon further research into the Harper's Bazaar magazine, I found out that the pocket was not in fact what we would consider a parasol pocket, but in fact what we would consider a chatelaine pocket, which would hang from the waistband of the dress free flowing on the front of the body. Burnus overskirt with parasol pocket. The pocket is not fastened to the skirt, but hangs loose by a ribbon from the waist. This of course suggests that the term parasol pocket when in the context of the period could mean several different things. However, in the Puget Sound Weekly, I did find a reference to a parasol pocket, which would be the parasol pocket that we would think of today. Fashion notes. Parasol pockets are made of a row of narrow knife plating. Puget Sound Weekly, June 16th, 1876. This is also backed up by the Port Royal Standard and Commercial, which also has a reference to a parasol pocket, which we would also think of as the parasol pocket of today. The back shows two scant puffs supplemented by a deep flounce, and the left side is ornamented by one of the long parasol pockets. Port Royal Standard and Commercial, Beaufort, South Carolina, March 23rd, 1876. Now in terms of the uses of the parasol pocket, there was a few examples of newspaper clippings and magazine articles that I was able to find. A Boylan Grove, Iowa man killed a dog that bit him the other day and immediately 
Thereon, a fairy young girl with tender blue eyes who owned the dog came out of the house and brushing back the golden curl that fell entangled over her intelligent brow, pulled a revolver out of her parasol pocket and filled the air around the astonished Boylan Grover so full of lead that he was only a mile and a half from the North Pole when he stopped running. The Bossier Banner, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, September 7th, 1876. Poor, tormented Betsy, she thrust her manuscript into the parasol pocket of her percal polonais. Detroit Free Press, October 13th, 1877. Sun Umbrellas and Parasols. Convenient and economical is the sun umbrella, in accordance with a serviceable traveling or waterproof suit, but it is not in harmony with the details of a coquettish costume. It overshadows and quite kills the effect of a pretty bonnet. The sun parasols are small, the shades and trimming selected to expressly match dresses. The costume parasols are trimmed with a ruffle, having raveled edges and linings of tinted silk matching the linings of the parasols, furnishing a very pleasing effect. Some have embroidered ruffles and a distinctive style, has a pink scalloped edge and a lining of white or light silk with butterfly embroidery in natural colors upon one of the sections. Those parasols, having jointed handles, which render them easily folding and placed when not in use, in the dress pocket. The co croquette parasols of tinted percal are extremely pretty for country wear and should be secured in colors to match percal suits. The New York Herald, May 6th, 1877. Now, obviously, these stories and anecdotes tell a lot about what you could be stored in a parasol pocket. And the New York Herald definitely does have the most compelling evidence that these pockets may have been, in fact, used for parasols. However, I came across this article in The Delineator talking about the parasol pocket. It's specifically advertising an adjustable pocket that ladies could put onto any of their polonaises or overskirts. This pocket is highly decorative with two bows and lined in scarlet silk, which was supposed to be seen when the pocket sort of gapes open. Although it is a highly decorative pocket, the article twice refers to the pocket as useful, although it doesn't really say what the pocket is used for. As I looked through these images, articles, and other people's opinions on the parasol pocket, I haven't really come up with any concrete conclusions. I know that isn't a very exciting thing to say at the end of the video, but the fact of the matter is, I just don't know. There's no smoking gun in any of these articles or newspaper clippings. It just doesn't seem to exist. I believe it's entirely possible that some of these pockets on more hard-wearing street costumes and walking skirts may have been in fact used to carry parasols, but the trend may have devolved into a purely decorative form by the time it reached evening gowns. Obviously, this would be a great place to store a fan, a handkerchief, or a pair of gloves for quick and easy access if you're at a party, but wouldn't necessarily be useful for a parasol if it's super highly decorated and supposed to be kind of a showy piece. So I hope you enjoyed this little gander into the parasol pocket, even though it wasn't highly conclusive. I really, really encourage you to do your own research into this subject. It is a very interesting one, and I would love to see if you're able to turn up anything interesting. I love researching historical dress. It's always a fun little research rabbit hole to go down these interesting esoteric Victorian trends. And if you have any other Victorian trends that you would like me to look into, just pop those down in the comments. I would love to do more videos about these weird and wacky, wonderful hijinks of Victorian dressmakers. And of course, if you would like to follow along with this channel, you can hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, make sure to like it. It really does help me out here on YouTube growing my channel. And if you would like to follow along with some of my sewing projects, you can do that over at Instagram. I'm at Costume and Conservation over there as well. And if you would like to see short tours of my study collection, as well as my daily hijinks, you can follow me on TikTok, also at Costume and Conservation. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.